Welcome everyone on the first Sunday of Lent. And today there will be communion. So if you haven't gotten your bread and juice, please get it now, or you can wait until the uh, hymn singing. Uh, but uh, please uh, grab something from your kitchen. It doesn't have to be bread or juice or anything related to that will be fine. Uh, just want to mention that the Lenten <coughs> Reflections will begin starting this Wednesday at 7.30 based on the book, Faith on the Move, Daily Reflections on Hope and Change. So you are more than welcome to come. And uh, I was also asked, can friends come? And of course, they are welcome to come as well. And uh, Emily likes would like to make an announcement. Hello, Ebenezer friends. Thank you all who donated to the coldest night of the year fundraiser and all who left encouraging messages on the website. Together, we raised $1,420, which is amazing. Thank you all again for helping out this cause and donating to support people in need. In the district of Richmond Hill, the combined total was $153,717 was raised with 600 walkers and 101 teams for the mosaic interface out of the cold and the Blue Door. This is the organization that runs the Out of the Cold program from the Heritage Hall three nights a week. You are a big part of helping today's to helping to reach this goal. Please enjoy the photos in today's e-news taken during the family's walk yesterday afternoon. All of us in safe faith, Emily and family. Okay, and uh, the the food basket uh, run by the York Region the Food Network is continuing to happening. And uh, last time, uh, there were like 19 people uh, who uh, ordered the food from the community. And uh, it's a good way to uh, support local farmers. And uh, we are continuing to offer that program so you can uh, get the more information uh, through Doug's emails and sign up as well. And uh, today's uh, worship leader uh, is Clyde, and uh, it is uh, only coincidence that uh, Clyde is a uh, worship leader for today, and not because he looks like Noah, uh, which is the theme for today's uh, scripture passage. And I'd like to also thank Murphy, Susan, Choir, Sean, and Doug as well. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds and bodies or worship. And let us begin with the acknowledgement of land. And this acknowledgement of land was adapted from U of T's statement. We acknowledge this land on which Ebenezer United Church serve our community. For thousands of years, this land has been on the traditional land of the Huron Wendat, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. Today, this meeting place is still the home to many indigenous people from across Turtle Island. And we are grateful to have the opportunity to worship, pray, and practice our faith on this land. Please join me and Clyde as we lead the call to worship. Sacred water that flows in our bodies and through the earth. Water is a powerful force that both creates and destroys, sustains and erodes, deposits and washes away. Through healing waters, through troubled waters, through still waters, through dangerous waters, through welcoming waters. God is with us. Come, let us worship, who is the creator of the universe and all that is in it. Please listen to these words as we offer them to God. To you, O oh God, we pray. In you, O oh God, we trust. For you, O oh God, we wait. Lead us so that we may always follow in your way. Teach us 
so that we may remain steadfast and faithful. Remind us of our covenant so that we may be a covenantal people, striving to care for all of creation as you care for us. Amen. Let us now join singing all praise to you, Voices United 297. Mm -hmm. The scripture reading this morning is taken from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 to 17. And this is the, uh, I guess, uh, the story uh, after 40 days and 40 nights of rain that flooded the whole world. And this is what God says to Noah in the aftermath. And Clyde and I will read this together. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. 
I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God continued, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth, and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. Hearing is God's word. As I grow older, I am less comfortable with changes. Unlike my children, I am also less inclined to try new restaurants. Change, as they say, brings stress. In life, the biggest causes of stress involve a major change, such as the death of a loved one, divorce, and the, and the loss of a job. Then there is the chaos that affects everyone with a huge amount of, of stress, such as this pandemic, war, and natural disasters. Who could forget the ice storm we had on Sunday, December 20th, 2013? It caused blackouts and many of us lived without power for three days, some one week, and some even longer than that. So we know a thing about living through chaos as well. Today, we reflect on a major chaos caused by a massive flood that wiped away a whole population. The story of the flood is not just confined to the Bible. The story is retold in other ancient Middle Eastern civilizations. Many in the ancient times thought that Natural disasters such as a huge flood was an act of God. And people have weaved morality tales about these kinds of events. In the Bible, we also have the Hebrew people's take on the story based on their faith and their particular belief of God. As the Bible tells us, before the flood, there was a lot of violence in the land. I could imagine that people were living as if life was all about the survival of the fittest. The loss of the jungle would have been the norm with kill or be killed kind of mentality. When we saw Russell Crowe's very mediocre movie, Noah, it was rather disturbing to see all the portrayal of violence. According to the Bible, it was painful for God as well. Genesis chapter 6 states, The Lord saw that the wickedness of humankind was great in the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made humankind on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. Through the flood, God resolved to destroy the destroyer and to wipe out those who were evil. As a result, God chose to start all over again by destroying the world while saving Noah and his family as well as the animals. The ancient people 
believe that the reason for chaos, destruction, and calamity was the fact that people have committed evil acts. It was God's way of punishing the evildoers that God is trying to teach a lesson. The genius of the Bible, however, is that the ancient theologians chose to dig deeper to come up with a much more profound understanding of God. As Genesis chapter 9 says to us, Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. What is interesting about this statement is that the covenant that God has made with Noah is strictly one-sided. Noah and his children did not have to do anything or say anything. There was no condition attached, such as they will live as better people or they will refrain from using violence. Secondly, the covenant does not limit to Noah and his children, but to all the descendants to come. Thirdly, the promise of God goes out to all the living creatures of the earth. So essentially, God has made a promise to the whole of creation. As the snowstorm in Texas reminds us, there are still environmental disasters happening in our world, including floods, earthquakes, ice storms, hurricanes, and tsunami. They bring chaos and destruction to our world. But what this Bible passage is saying to us is that God is not the cause. God also did not bring COVID-19 to destroy the sinners and fools, although it is very tempting to think this way. Though insurance companies still use the term act of God to describe natural disasters, that is not what the Bible is saying. God is in the business of healing, mending, and creating, and not in the business of bringing in natural disasters and chaos to punish people and destroying creation. The story of Noah was written down in a very interesting time in Israel's history. It was written after Israel had returned home, after living in the land of Babylon as an exiled people. So they experienced firsthand the pain of living through the chaos of the war, of residing in a foreign land as slaves, and after so after experiencing the loss of everything they held dear. Similarly, but not at the same scale, we also have lived through chaos with terrorism, climate change, unequal distribution of wealth in our society, the pain of racism, and now the pandemic lockdown. Individually, we know that life is never smooth sailing as we also experience chaos with broken relationships, the premature death of a loved one, illnesses of body, mind, and spirit. God's covenant with Noah reminds us that God has made a lasting covenant with us and all of creation, that after the chaos and destruction, God gives us new opportunities to start over, to rebuild, and to create a more wonderful life with God, who has promised to be compassionate and merciful. So we can go on with hope. What is also interesting is the symbol of the rainbow. Though it looks quite beautiful, the ancient people saw it as a cosmic archer's bowl where God's fired arrows down to earth in the form of lightning. So the rainbow was a symbol of 
destruction. God's promise to Noah, however, changed its meaning. The rainbow is no longer a symbol of destruction, rather a symbol of God's new covenant, which makes it even more beautiful. We are still in the midst of the pandemic, and the sense of chaos is still with us in our world and in our lives. At a time like this, we do need to remember the promise of a new covenant, the hope of new life, and a new way of understanding God and understanding our world. Destruction and chaos still do happen from time to time. Rather than seeing God as the cause, God instead becomes the anchor in the storm of life. God is the root that holds us steady. With that assurance, we can face the stress and change with confidence as we journey towards new life in Easter. Thanks be to God. A vignette of black history. Angela Davis was once known as the Wayne Gretzky of women's hockey and was one of the first two women and second black athlete to be inducted to the Hockey Hall of Fame in 2010. Her old ice rink in Flemington Park was renamed the Angela James Arena by the city of Toronto in 2009. At this time, I'd like to give thanks to all of you for your continue, continuing support of the church, but also being a part of this church for the faith you have and the faith that you practice and the sense of family and community you build through your presence and for being who you are. And with a sense of gratitude, of one another and God who surrounds us all, let us pray the prayer of dedication together. Creator God, the world is under a lot of strain and stress, fear, and illness. We trust that it breaks your heart to see the world in so much turmoil. May all that we do, all that we say, and all that we give help to care for one another and your creation. Amen. As we prepare for the sacrament of Holy Communion, let us sing together, let us break bread together, and if you do not have your communion elements now, please go and get them. Please join me and Clyde as we lead the prayer of great thanksgiving. God be with you. And also with you. 
Lift up your heart. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God. It is so good to do so. Gathered in this place of rainbows, reflected in the light of heaven, is the bread and wine of promise, the body and blood of covenant, the symbol and action of love. Promise maker, they are waiting here to be broken and shared for this world. Itself broken, in warring, in prejudice, in hatred, in loneliness, in arrogance, in power. We speak to these places as we remember that night when Jesus took bread and broke it, took wine and shared it, took promise and opened it. And we speak to these places as we journey with all the angels singing, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. We speak to all these places as we break and share and offer each other the food of heaven. We remember all those whom Jesus would like us to share in the heavenly feast. We pray for all who are in sorrow or in pain. All who are ill or alone. All who live with fear, oppression, or hunger. All whom the world counts as last and least. We pray for your church and its varied ministries. For the nations as they strive for peace and justice. For the earth and the fragile web of life we share. For our families and friends. For the people on our prayer sheet this week. Roy Dixon, Michelle Gillette, Mavis Grange and his daughter and her daughter, Dorothy Grant, Joan and Clyde's friends, David and Donna Lee Gullison, Phyllis Harvey, Doug's sister Jackie, Tanya's friend Kristen, Diane McLean's father Jack, Barbara Nation, Rick Saunders, Diane's friend Tokiko, Joseph Salins, Joseph Stepania, Mary's friends Andrea, Peter Toison's daughter Veronica, Connie's friend Elaine Leva and her daughter Andrea, Linda Wilson's friend and family, Susan's friends Heather and Will, Gaynor Kim Singh, who mourns the death of her father, and all those we name in silence. God of grace, hear our prayer. And in your love, answer. Through Christ, with Christ, and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory is yours, God most holy, now and forever. Amen. Let us continue with the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you.
thanked be to God. The love of Christ poured out for you. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. And all are welcomed at the banqueting table of our Lord Jesus Christ. And please eat and drink. And may you be filled with the love and the spirit of Christ. Let us say together the prayer after communion in unison. For the bread we have eaten, for the wine we have tasted, for the life we have received, we thank you, God. Grant that what we have done and have been given here may so put its mark on us that it may remain always in our hearts. Grant that we may grow in Christ like love and understanding and that ours may be lives of faithful action in Christ's name all men and as we prepare to go out into God's world as much as we can in pandemic times let us sing together sent out in Jesus name more voices 212 Let us conclude our service with a benediction. Love God in all things equally, for God is equally near to all creatures. And among these creatures, God does not love any one person more than any other. God is all and is one. All things become nothing but God. Apprehend God in all things, for God is in all things. If we spend enough time with the tiniest creatures, even a caterpillar, we would never need sermons. So full of God is every creature. Go and spend, God, spend time in God's creation and in the amazing presence of God in all things. May God's creation nurture you and bless you. Amen. Let us go now in peace.
So please join us again next Sunday, February 28th. And uh, next Sunday, uh, Doug Mark will share his expertise regarding the COVID-19, the virus and uh, vaccines and any other questions or issues that you may have, but we're afraid to ask. Uh, he'll be here to, to share his uh, information with us. So thank you, Doug, for that. And uh, once again, you are more than welcome to invite your friends and, and family to, uh, to, uh, to come in and uh, take part. Uh, they are welcome to come for the uh, service or just come after the service. And uh, there's no waiting room, so they can just come in quietly and, uh, and that's not a problem at all. So anyways, uh, thank you to worship leaders and, uh, and uh, you are welcome to.